Hi guys, hi, how's it going? How are you doing today? Hopefully today finds you well. Today I am doing yet another palette review in my palette roulette series in which I'm utilizing a palette or two, in this case three palettes, for the entirety of the time that it takes me to use every single shade at least one time. Really get uh, some really great thoughts on how the palette is used, use it with primer, without primer, all the things, and bring you the good, the bad, the ugly, and all things, these palettes. And then we pull another palette and we do it all over again. I show you some pictures and some swatches, then we pull another palette and we do it all over again. And I hope that sounds like something you're interested in. Today, I'm actually reviewing some palettes that... I mean, one of them is super old and the other two are also, you know, pretty older palettes. You can still get them. This one you can't get anymore, but I'm actually kind of excited to walk through these palettes with you. I am astounded by this one for the most part. And yeah, I'm just really excited to talk to you guys about them and really excited to pull a new palette to work on for the month of March, since that is what we are going into. For those of you new here, hi, my name is Donna. I'm a lover of all things high and colorful beauty and self-care. I also work in the beauty industry as a field leader for Ulta Beauty, so I get a lot of education in my position. I'd like to bring you that education here. Ultimately, I'm just out here talking about makeup because I like to talk about makeup. And I'm sure if you're here, you also like to talk about makeup. So let's be friends. Let's be friends. At the end of the day, I think that we could we could curate a pretty fantastic friendship and I can't wait for you to be a part of my YouTube fam. So I hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go. With that said, let's roll into this palette review of these three palettes that I'm anxious to talk to you guys about. So I am reviewing three palettes. All three of these palettes I did receive in a BoxyCharm or an Ipsy at some point in time. Not sure which, if I'm honest with you. I'm helping Ipsy because that might mean that they came into my collection a lot more recently than I think that they might have. But with that said, one of them is super, super old and I'm quite certain it is just as old as it should be. <laughs> and I probably received it in a boxy charm. who knows? Um, but I am reviewing two Shayna B cosmetics palettes and one ColourPop palette. So let's start with the ColourPop palette. This is so old. This palette launched, I think, no less than five years ago. I think it maybe might be more than five years ago. But this is a collab that ColourPop did with Bretman Rock. I don't know anything about Bretman Rock, if I'm honest with you. I think that the only reason why this palette is in my collection is because I received it in a beauty box. Now, Boxy or Ipsy, I'm not sure which one because obviously it is an old, old palette, but it is a beautiful palette nonetheless. This is what the palette looks like. This is the ColourPop X Bretman Rock Lit Palette, and this is one of two palettes that came in this collection or collaboration. They did have Lit and Wet wet being a little bit more on the icy blue color story range and this one being more of a warm tone reds, oranges, yellows range. The back of the palette does look like this. It has every one of the shades as well the shade, as the shade names in here. It does tell you it's a pressed powder palette. It does tell you that it is cruelty free. Gives you a little bit of information about ColourPop in and of itself and it tells you it is 0.32 ounces of product or 0.04 ounces per pan because there are eight shadows in here. The front of the palette, this lit, is a level of glitter that does come off on your fingers as you are running your hand across it. I don't know if that is a make or break with you, but it is a nice like gold cardboard packaging, but gold paper with the name lit is kind of embedded in it across. The dark spots here are where it says lit, embedded in more of a, a shiny print, 
whereas the rest of the gold is more matte. And again, this is glitter that does come off on your fingers if you rub it too much. On the inside, it is burgundy. It does say lit on it. ColourPop X Bretman Rock or Bretman X ColourPop. Um, this is the color story of this palette. So as you can see, it is very warm tone. It does have some reds, some oranges, even has that bright yellow in there. There are eight pans in here. Five of them are matte, two of them are shimmer, and then this one here is more of a like satin tone, peachy pink. This was a limited edition palette along with the wet palette also in the collaboration and it's no longer for sale. You can get it on Mercari, you can get it on eBay, but you can't pick it up at ColourPop. There are two shades in this palette not intended for eye use. They are going to be Mercy, which is here, this one here, and Like, which is this one here. They are the red tones. But this is a cruelty-free brand, right? ColourPop is cruelty-free and vegan, so they do use dyes for their red tones versus Carmine, which is crushed up beetles. And like I said, this was launched five years ago. This, however, I will tell you, has still got great performance. Like I was really, really shocked at how well this performed. It seems as how it is as old as it is. It worked so well with or without primer, although I will say that it did seem to last a bit, little bit longer, about two hours longer with primer than it did without primer. I would say the wear time on it, I got a good seven hours of wear time without significant fading when I was wearing it with the primer. Without a primer, it was about five hour marker. And I do think that the yellow fades quite a bit more quickly than some of the other shades in it. I think it's just because it's a yellow. It's the lightest shade in the palette. What I didn't love about this palette, it doesn't go super, super dark, but it also doesn't go super, super light. This is about as dark as you're gonna get, and that color is actually not a super dark brown, even though it appears like it is. It's actually kind of like a more rusty reddish brown, and that's just not, it's not dark enough for me for outer corner. So I did find myself utilizing like my brown eyeliner to darken up the outer V, or the other palettes that I was using to darken up the outer V. There's just not enough in here for me to utilize this as a one and done eyeshadow palette because like it didn't go very dark. It also didn't go super light. This is the lightest and this is actually also not that light and it appears more brown on an eye look than it does this peachy color that you're seeing here in the screen. That said, I would say that it was easy, easy to use. It blended super easily. I felt like it worked well with each other super easily. I do feel like there was a level of building that I needed to do to get the opacity of the color that I wanted. Like this yellow is packed on to my lid probably eight times overall because I put it on my lid, I blended a shadow into it, realized it wasn't as yellow as I wanted it to be, put more yellow on, packed more yellow on, packed more yellow on. You do have to build, build, build in order to get the opacity out of this palette that I really want to need from an eyeshadow palette. So at the end of the day, it will probably not stay in my collection because I do have better reds and better, better yellows that I feel like I would pull for before this. But I was actually kind of surprised that it still performed the way it did five years later. This has been in my drawer of shame for years and years and years, and I don't know why I just never picked it up. I just never did. Maybe because I don't know anything about Bretman Rock and it wasn't part of the pull for me to use it. Maybe also because I don't really have a whole lot from ColourPop in my collection and it's not like typically a brand that I'm going after, to be honest, because I don't have much of it in my collection. There's just not a lot that they bring forth into the makeup space that I find myself being pulled towards. This is a beautiful palette, but I just, I just can't see myself using it a whole hell of a lot. So I am going to declutter it, but it wasn't a bad palette. 
This did in its heyday come in at $12 and $12 is fantastic for eight shadows, especially eight shadows that are pretty dang good. Like I said, I was actually quite shocked that these performed the way they did. Let's look at the picture of the uh, of the swatches. You guys know that I'm not doing like live swatches these days just because it takes forever for me to do that and I don't want to keep you guys here for 500 years. If there are call out shadows I will live swatch them for you but these there's nothing like spectacular about any one of these shadows so I don't feel like any one of them is like a call out shadow. So I'm not gonna live swatch them. But here's the picture of the swatches that I did on my arm with this palette. No primer and just two swipes, one swipe, two swipes of the color to build. And that is it. The first shadow we have is Or Whatever. And Or Whatever, as you guys can see, is like this peachy, tan-ish matte color. And this is the lightest one in the palette besides that yellow, I guess. And that is why I feel like this palette didn't get as light as I needed it to. That shade is just not as light as I need it to be. And I actually felt like this one kind of oxidized on the outskirts of the shade, especially the longer it sat on an eye look. Then we have Mercy. Mercy is a warm toned like burgundy shimmer. It's such a beautiful shade and I did use it quite a bit in my outer V because it was quite a bit deeper than any of the other shades in this palette I felt like. I really loved this shade. Really don't have anything bad to say about it but this is one that is not intended for eye use. I used it on my eye. I have a, a lot that I could say about not intended for eye use. If you guys have been around, you know, but the FDA makes rules on whether something is good for eyes and isn't good for eyes based on like the dyes and stuff that it has in it. And in the UK, it's perfectly fine to use the shade on your eyes, but in the United States, it's not. So I do think that there are some outdated rules for the FDA as far as what eyeshadows should be used on a person's eyeball or not. So I used it on my eye. I never saw any kind of irritation from it. And that's really what the FDA rules will tell you is that it may cause irritation or staining of some sort. I didn't have either one of those things happen to me while using this shade on my eye. But you got to do what you feel is best for you. So just want to put that out there. The next one is Macchiato. This is a warm dark brown matte, but I really didn't feel like it was super dark brown. I also felt like it really pulled red in an eye look. I mean, it is what it is. It's a beautiful brown. I really had a good time with it, but I also feel like it's just not as brown brown as I wanted it to be. Then we have Cleo Amour. Cleo Amour is a warm dark yellow matte that is in my eye look today and that was used actually quite a bit in this palette. I actually quite love this yellow. The only thing that I don't love about it is like I said, you definitely have to pack it on and pack it on and pack it on some more in order to get it to show up in your eye without fading almost immediately. I did put it over the top of a primer most days. The day I put it on my lid without a primer, it did not even show up like an hour in. So I would say this is not a great yellow wholeheartedly, but I did really like it and I enjoyed having it in this palette. It really did due diligence to create some more interest in the eye looks that I was creating. The next one is She Got Money and She Got Money is just a warm mid-tone dark gold shimmer. I am not a huge fan of gold but I felt like this one was more like rosy than it was like golden so I didn't mind this one. I liked it a lot as an inner corner and on that first like third of my lid. Then I have Period. Period is a dark coral matte. It is in my eye look today up towards the brow bone. I'm really beautiful dark coral. I did like it a lot. I think if any shade existed in this palette that might be more unique to my collection, it would be that one. The next one is Like, and Like is a medium berry matte. It does swing quite a bit more pink than it does red, and I really wished it had been more red. 
um, because that would have done wonders to help the eye looks that came out of this palette feel a little bit more deep or interesting. And then we have Baiting, and Baiting is a pinky, corally, satin shade, and I didn't really love this shade. Not that it was a bad shade, I just didn't really love using it in an eye look. I feel like it's one of those shades that I talk about a lot that said like this one doesn't really go here. I felt like that one didn't really um, marry well with the rest of the shades that were in the palette. At the end of the day, like I said, there is just this one shadow here that I feel like could be potentially interesting to my collection maybe one that I don't have anywhere else but I'm literally not going to hold on to this palette for that one shade and I do know that Colourpop tends to have palettes that you can um, that are magnetic palettes that you can pull shades out of I might think about that at the end of the day and that yellow because as much as I had to pack it on to an eye look I really did like that yellow it did create a little bit of interest to the eye looks that I use but I don't know. I don't know that I necessarily need it. I may hold on to this palette, but I don't think that there's really any reason to do so. What might happen is I might go on an adventure of trying to dupe out these shades. Truth is, though, I know I have these shades over and over in my collection. So do I need it? No. Am I impressed by it? Sure. It's a five-year palette that I feel like did a really good job. It is mostly what is in my eye look today. So I really love it for that reason. I think that it pulls out a really beautiful eye. This shade is in my eye look today. This shade's in my eye look today. This shade's in my eye look today. This, sh this shade's in my eye look today. I... I just feel like it's, I just feel like it's beautiful. It's a really pretty palette. Um, they did a really good job with the color story on this one. I just don't need it. So then we come to these two and these two palettes are $27 a piece. And there is no way on God's green earth that I think that you should be paying more for these two palettes than you would pay for an a, a eight pan ColourPop palette. And I'll tell you why. I think that they think, I mean, it's an indie brand, right? So, and I think that they think that they've got something like special going on here with these, I'm not trying to talk ill of, you know, an independent owner of a brand who's just trying to make ends meet. She's still small enough that, um, you know, she doesn't ship internationally yet. She's just US and she does free shipping. And she's got some really great things going on, but these are really horrible these are really horrible eyeshadows. And I almost came back to you right after I did my last palette roulette. And I realize it hasn't been that long, but I almost came back to you while I was editing that palette roulette and said, I'm not, I'm not using these palettes. They are atrocious because they really are bad. So let's Let's walk through them. These are the Shayna B Miami and Miami Nights palettes. So this one is Miami. This one is Miami Nights. This one is deemed an eyeshadow palette. And this one is deemed a pressed pigment palette. But there's literally one pressed pigment in here. So they have to call it a pressed pigment palette because it is not safe for eye use. But it's not safe for eye use for God knows why. Because this is not a vegan eyeshadow um, palette. It does have carmine in it and this is the shade that is considered the the reason the, or the the pigment that you cannot use on your eyes. I will tell you I have never ever had irritation from a pressed pigment shade. I've never had irritation from a red pressed pigment shade. Maybe from a, a glittered one or something like that but not like a matte and not a red i put this into my waterline and about died it hurt so bad i was like well that'll teach you to go through this world going 
Oh, there's no reason why it can't go near your eye. It doesn't irritate me. It was irritating. It was awful. It burnt so bad. So that is the reason why this one is considered a pressed pigment palette for that one shade, that one shade alone. This is also a Beauty Box brand. I do know that these guys came in an Ipsy for me. I received a lot actually from Shayna B. An Ipsy I've received a blush from Shayna B. I've received a eyeshadow duo from Shayna B. I think I actually also have like a face palette from Shayna B that I think I decluttered because it's just so powdery. These are no different. These created such a big mess on my eye, on my face, in my palette, on my vanity, all the places that eyeshadow could get it got from these powdery powdery eyeshadows so let's look at the palettes first so this is the miami palette and i do love the aesthetic the black with the hot pink like palm trees looks like miami feels like miami right the back of it just has information on the palette it is an indie brand they are from florida this one was made in taiwan it tells you that it is 0 0.03 ounces per pan in here and yeah that's about it there's no shelf life on it nothing which i found was strange this is what the inside of the palette looks like i love that it comes with a mirror that's amazing and this one is your more neutral color story of the two where this could be like an everyday palette for you what i don't like about it is it doesn't really makes sense it doesn't complete the story of the packaging um, but this cardboard packaging is really nice it does have a magnetic closure on it much like the lit one does but this magnet is much i feel like more firm than this magnet this magnet could be easily manipulated or you know could easily get jarred and open in your bag if that's the way but it does come with a mirror so that's a good thing I didn't use the mirror. I don't really use the mirrors. Half the time I forget to take the like protective tape off of the mirrors that are in these kind of palettes. I do love that this has four mattes and four shimmers in it. So it's like a nice rounded palette and that each one of the shimmers has a matte to go with it. That is also pretty great. I do have these two mattes in my eye look today. I, I like this color story. It's not bad. And I actually quite like the shimmers in this palette as well. This is Miami Nights. Miami Nights has like a skyscape on it. So you can see like the buildings and it's still got kind of that mauvey pinky tone to it with the palm trees. I've got a theme going on here. The back of it again is just real plain and simple. Sunbursts on it. This one also says 0 0.03 ounces per pan. This one does say that it's a pressed pigment palette. Again, we're not seeing any kind of shelf life or anything. And this one says it was made in China. When you open it up, this has a mirror as well. This protective mirror cover is still on there. And then this is the color story of this one. I do feel like this one matches the cardboard packaging a lot better than the other one does for sure. This does look like it belongs to this packaging. What I would say about this one is that I feel like that like bright silver glitter shadow doesn't need to be in this palette. There's not really any reason for it and it doesn't it doesn't make sense, right? This one doesn't go here, kind of doesn't make sense. This is a beauty box kind of makeup brand, which is not here nor there, not anywhere. Like we have seen Natasha Denona in beauty boxes lately. So that's not dogging on this beauty brand, but there is a big difference between beauty box makeup brands and makeup brands that just decide to go into a beauty box on a whim. I would say that these are awful and I'm not here to mince words with you. This one I feel like was better, but I feel like it was better because it was just the the shades of it were more every day. It was easier to see or it was easier to hide the fallout. These shimmers are of 
a more of a kind of like a satiny shimmer nature not real super impactful but also not not impactful if that makes any sense they're shiny but they're they're more like satiny shiny than they are like wham bam in your face shiny and they they definitely don't cause any kind of like exacerbation to texture which I appreciate them for because sometimes these kind of like not I don't want to say low scale because that makes it sound so bad but unheard of brands have really poor shimmer quality and they exacerbate your texture I didn't feel that way with this palette this one was really pretty I was really excited to use it I felt like it had some browns in here and it had some you know beautiful mauves and red tones and I felt like it would go good with lit and it would really help to bring to life anything that lit maybe didn't have um this gray is actually not super great it doesn't deepen up anything as a matter of fact it kind of buffs away into nothing this shade here is a lot more like mauve toned than it appears it appears to be a lot more brown in the pan than what it appears on the skin and I felt like that in that way these two were too similar to actually be in the same palette with that said this was a shade nobody needed this was kind of a pretty shade but also really didn't need to be in the palette with these two because this shimmer was more of that satiny shimmer kind of thought process and it really didn't have any kind of impact I did like this shimmer this one I didn't realize it was a satin until I put it all over my lid as like a eye primer setting shade and therefore my whole eye was so shimmery or satiny pearlescent like icy and I had to take it off and start all over again and I was like why why do we have this being the lightest shade in here as a pearly satiny shimmer when we don't really have any kind of like eye setting primer shade which I don't typically use but that's the other thing I found with these eyeshadows is that if you use them with a primer you need to make darn sure that your primer is dry dry primer so I found myself going over my eye primer for these shadows with a you know a cream tone so that they would not stick in one place and not budge because if they went over any kind of wetness any kind of tackiness whatsoever they didn't go anywhere they just stayed there they didn't budge so I I didn't I didn't love this I didn't love either one of these I felt like even with the primer I only got about six hours of wear out of these guys before they were noticeably fading in an eye look and even then like you guys can see how like big my eyeliner is on this eye and also on this eye and it is because this one doesn't get deep enough for me like I said so I went into this eye look with this red and it just it doesn't build well it voids out everything underneath it like I had this whole area of my eye was vacant of color because it just took everything underneath it away but I had red powder all underneath my eye it was they were just I mean they could be pretty I guess but they were just not easy to, they were not easy like every shade in these palettes I would pack on and then as I was blending they would just blend away and then I would have to pack more on and then blend and it would blend away and then I would have to pack more on and then at some point it just started voiding out any color underneath it so it just wasn't worth it it wasn't worth it to use these and like I said I had complete before I started editing the last palette roulette video I had completed two eye looks utilizing these three palettes and knew before I finished editing that last palette roulette that this 
these were not the palettes for me, but I continued to try and persevere so that I could get a real gauge on whether they were good with primer, without primer, whether they started getting better, whether I just needed certain brushes. I won't be keeping any of these palettes. However, this one, I I could see myself holding on to just because it was good, but these, these were really bad and definitely not $27 worth of eyeshadow. And interestingly, these are called mini palettes for her. She does have a larger palette, but I wouldn't even, I wouldn't even consider purchasing any of them because they're just, they're just not good. They're just not good. Let's look at some swatches. So we're going to do the Shana B Miami palette first, which is this one that has the everyday regular, like one and done kind of eyeshadow palette color vibe. And these don't really have a description of the shade on the website. So you're just going to have to take my word for it. I'm going to describe it as best I can. The first shade is Hall Over Nude. And Hall Over Nude is a really light golden shimmer shade that is like, like I said, these shimmers perform more like satins do. Not super impactful, but not super not impactful. Then we have Port a Princess and Port a Princess is actually quite pretty. I found it to be a really beautiful kind of like pinky rosy gold tone with a little bit of a coral kick to it. Then we have Everglade. Everglade was really more industrial than I wanted it to be. It looked like a beautiful kind of like coppery bronze in the palette, but it showed up on my skin more of a, a glitter bombed antique green, which I typically like, but this one just looked dirty more than anything else. Then I have Heat. And Heat is a really beautiful like orange copper. It looked so, so pretty with that South Peach orange all over in the crease area, Cafecito on the outer corner, and then Heat on the inner portion of the lid space. So pretty. Um, for the mattes, we have Biscayne. Biscayne is the uh, like beige colored matte that I used all the time because it was only the only beige colored matte I had. Then we have Winwood. Winwood is just slightly darker than Biscayne as far as from beige to like orange. It's got a little bit of a tanness to it. It is in my eyeshadow today, but just barely laid over top of Biscayne to kind of lay down a base and it really didn't show up in an eye look. So I use it as a base a lot. And then we have South Peach. South Peach is beautiful, like burnt orange and matte. And then we have Cafecito, which is the darkest shade that I had for the last couple weeks to use in an eye like really beautiful, deep, dark brown. Now moving on to Miami Nights. Miami Nights is the more mauve palette choice. We have Ice Palace, which I should have known by the name that this was a satiny shade, but it didn't dawn on me that they would put this color in a satin in a palette that doesn't have any other lighter tones in it, I guess. So Ice Palace is a beige colored, like icy satin beige. Then we have Queen of Diamonds. Queen of Diamonds was my nemesis. I used this one time and one time is enough for me to realize that I did not need silver glitter all over the place, which is exactly how it went down. Then I have Bay Harbor. Bay Harbor was actually really pretty, but I expected more brown from it and got a little bit more rose copper from it. And then we have Lincoln Red and Lincoln Red actually also beautiful, just wasn't the deep red that I wanted it to be, but it was a truly beautiful red toned, like satiny shimmer color. 
Then for the mattes, we have Space, which is definitely a mauve toned matte. This one definitely looks mauve in the palette and it appears mauve on your eye look. This one was one of my favorites, but probably one of the biggest culprits for fading super, super quickly. Then we have MIA Mauve, and MIA Mauve is, I mean, it looks brown in the palette, but it is definitely mauve, and because it is as mauve as it is, while the tone is slightly different, I don't believe that this and space needed to be in the same palette. Then we have Vino. Vino is the deep red. This one, I hated using this shade, this shade so, so much. And that's a shame because I really do like a red, but this one caused so many problems with an eye look. And this one was the biggest issue for dustiness and powder all over my face. And then it just didn't want to go anywhere. And I don't feel like this one stained, but I do feel like this one irritated my eye so, so much every time I used it. And then we have Venetian Grey, which I think is supposed to be kind of like charcoal-y, but ends up being more of a like slaty blue, which is all fine and dandy. I like a slate blue, but when you're depending on that color to be the deepest color that you have, for any eye look, I just feel like they could have done that one better. And that one certainly did not want to stay on an eye look. It just blended away to nothing almost every single time I used it. No matter what kind of application process I was using for that one, it just didn't stay on my eye. Overall, I think I got, this one is Fallout Glore, the pans of the pans of product look really big, but they're actually smaller than what's in this palette. So like you don't have to pretend to be more than you are. It's okay for you to have smaller eyeshadow pans. What I would say is they're certainly not worth $27 in my humble opinion. I think that these are um, quite possibly one of the worst one of the worst formulations that I've used of eyeshadows in a very long time. And that hurts my heart to say because I love trying new indie brands and I don't like speaking ill of somebody's creativity that they're trying to, they're trying to make a buck on, right? They're trying to live their life on and they're, they're, they're doing what they feel like they need to do to make somebody's life better and to help people feel beautiful in life. But I just also don't want you guys to waste your money on this formulation of eyeshadow because it's just not good. This one, you know, I just, I know that I have eyeshadow palettes that I would sooner pull for than this one. And I also know that it'll live in a place in my collection where it's not going to see me digging into it a whole lot. So I'm just not sure that I need to hold on to this palette, but it wouldn't be one that I would think twice about passing on to somebody else. Whereas these ones I'd be like, you know, those are not great. So maybe give them to your kid to play with. Just saying. I'm gonna go pick another palette, I'll be right back. Okay, so we are seeing in the first full week of March, right? Or last week of February, first full. So I'm recording this on Sunday the 25th, 26th, whatever it is. So we're not quite in March yet, but you'll probably see this first full week of March. And I really, I knew that there was a, a palette in my drawer of shame that would go, there's actually a few that would go really, really well for this month specifically and this season of March and spring and whatnot. And that is Michaela Pot 2. <laughs> Let me know down in the comment section if you had guessed that. I had reviewed Michaela Part 1 last year at some point. I think it was last year, but I hadn't yet reviewed Michaela Pot 2. And I just feel like this is perfection for March because it is a green palette with the pot of gold inside of it. Um, I love these palettes. I think that they're fantastic. I also am a really huge advocate for Glamlight formula and I 
cannot be more excited to use this palette. The one thing that I don't really 100% love about this palette is there's not really any kind of like neutrality to it, but sometimes, sometimes that's fine. I am okay with there not being any kind of neutrality to it. I don't think that my butt is ever gonna get bored from this and I think that I can come up with some pretty cool and fantastic eye looks utilizing this palette. If I need neutrality, I guess I can pull in, I don't know, another palette of sorts, but I also have like the Charlotte Tilbury Walk of No Shame in my um, deck of panning, and this one is truly pretty neutral. So I also have the Winky Lux in my deck of panning, and this one is also pretty neutral. So I just don't feel like I need to pull anything else in with this one. And this one has got what, 30 eyeshadows in it. So I am so stoked to use this palette. So with that said, that is the palette that I am going to review over the next several weeks. Hopefully it takes a little longer than a couple weeks. It's only you know, a couple of times that I have been so done with eyeshadow palettes already that I come to you, you know, much before that three week marker and be like, okay, I'm done with this. But this will be the palette that I review next time. So I hope that you want to stick around. Please subscribe before you go so that you're informed when that video goes up, but also when any of my videos go up. I do upload three times a week. I'm pretty fantastic to be around. My personality is fab you ask any one of my subscribers out there kind of a kick in the pants to hang out with and i hope that you'll want to subscribe before you go with that said thank you guys so much for joining me today let me know what you think about the palettes i just reviewed the palette i'm about to review and anything else that you've got hot fire burning in your head i would love to hear from you down in the comment section so don't forget to hit me up down there um yeah i just hope that you and yours are doing well i hope that all of you are safe and healthy and getting along as best you can in this world. I hope that you are all loving each other, but loving each other from afar. And until next time, bye friends.